I guess where it all started was my senior year of college. I was taking all my 400 level business classes. I was working 20, 25 hours a week at Hellsburg Diamonds. And I was also bartending about 20, 25 hours a week. I also wasn't sacrificing any of my fun time. So what that meant was for pretty much that whole semester, I was sleeping anywhere between three and five hours a night. And I, I, I will never forget this day. Um, my, my roommate and I were sitting in the living room and I was doing my homework and I turned to him just like, Brown, something's different. And he's like, okay. And he's like, well, you know, what's going on, Jackson? Tell me about it. I'm like, I, I don't know, man. I, I just feel it in my chest. I just know that something is, is different. And what this was, was hypomania. Things just started to kind of unravel from there. And I just got super, super grandiose thoughts, delusional. I have notebooks of just all this brainstorming. And it's really interesting because you look back at it and there's three or four really, really good ideas um, surrounded by maybe 60 like terrible ideas. <laughs> and, uh, but they were all amazing at the time. Like everything was going to work and everything was going to make me millions of dollars. And I decided eventually, uh, what I came to the conclusion of is that I was going to um, start a cab company and we were going to be the huge party scene and it was going to be, you know, it was, we we're going to be unstoppable. We we're going to take over the cab industry in six months down there. And um, so as I'm building this cab company, I'm buying flat screen TVs, I'm buying PlayStations. That has nothing to do at all with running a cab business. And um, so things got really weird really quick. Within a week, my roommates were like, all right, dude, you got to go. They assumed that I was on some like pretty hard drugs or something. And then there was a day I remember, um, I, I assume one of them called the cops on me. And the cops came to the door and I was chit-chatting with them and um, talking pretty weird. I have all these amazing things just flowing through me. Like I felt like a muse. Like I just, I was this conduit for these amazing business ideas and these amazing ways to help people and save the world and all this stuff. And so after talking to me for a while, the officer asked me, if uh, if you minded if I called my if he called my mom I'm like no absolutely call her up man so I give her the phone and by this time my mom had received multiple phone calls like we don't know what's going on but some something isn't right something is very 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 different and uh, the the officer uh, chose his words very uh, well he told my mom that uh, he was having a conversation with me. And he felt that if they weren't here in 24 hours, I could be dead. So my parents decided that was a good reason to buy a plane ticket and come down to Phoenix. So a bed finally opened up at uh, Maricopa County Mental Institution. And since I wasn't using any drugs, um, I was able to go there. And um, so I was there for a total of three weeks. Um, when I first got there, I wasn't really interested in taking any drugs. I wasn't interested in, in trying anything. So that went for a day and a half. And when my parents came to visit me for the third time, and I sat down, and I'm like, guys, I got it. I haven't figured it out this time. Like, here it is. And I laid out my business plans, and they're just like, put that away. Like, we, we need to figure out what's going on with you. Would you quit talking this insanity? I'm like, no, no, okay. I know where you're coming from, but this time, this time I got it. This is it, you know? And I laid it out. And I look up and just both are like, just the blank, helpless stares. And I remember just being like, all right, what do I need to sign? What do we need to do? Let's, cause I, I understood at that point that something was gravely, gravely wrong. After that time, they sat down with me and they were like, well, we're diagnosing with bipolar. And these are the symptoms of bipolar. And of the 10 classic symptoms, I had displayed nine of them. So we began a little bit of a, a recovery plan. I was there for three weeks, um, spent a lot of time in group. My mom worked in the uh, health industry in Manitowoc County for many, many years. She knew, my, uh, she knew the doctor that I was being signed over to. And I was supposed to go to a mental institution there. And she talked to them and he's like, well, if you, if, if you will give him 24-hour supervision, I will allow you to take care of him in home. Um, but if you can't have 24 hour supervision, he needs to be in the mental institution until we get this figured out. And uh, so luckily there was connections there. I was able to stay home. 
um, was just zapped on my parents' couch for probably three, four months, um, going to therapy, psychiatrist two or three times a week, um, you know, just your life's been turned upside down, like had a ton of friends, everyone knows you, like you can do no wrong to your, on your parents, like your mom makes you three meals a day, does your laundry, and um, you can't wake up before 10 and by 6.30 you need to go to sleep. Um, so a lot, that was really, really tough and a uh, lot of paradigm shifting and a lot of perception stuff and working through how to um, make the best of this. I figure that type of stuff, having to take the medication, having to take the time out of my week to go to these groups and stuff like that is much better than the alternative of at some point in time, which will never be planned, all of a sudden I realized what I've been doing the last three weeks is completely off my rocker and now I'm full-blown manic again and um, not only is it going to take some time to fix this, but it's probably going to mess up whatever employment I had going on and some other things. Um, there was another, I had a, a little uh, aftershock when I first got back. Um, I was doing real well, Everything thought, everyone thought things were good. I got this job, this independent contractor job selling uh, advertising and had like three sales and made like $4,000 the first week. And um, very shortly after that, I'm making this ridiculous amount of income and building a cab business again. Um, so I definitely didn't quite have the grasp and the logic and understanding of the disorder. Um, so that's when I got knocked out a second time much harder and kind of reset me. I was just really, really fortunate. I had family who supported me 100%. I spent a lot of time with a therapist. I, I think I probably saw her two times a week and you know just a lot of like grieving over not being able to do any of the things I was planning on um, not being able to wrap my head around Jackson you're not going back to work for at least six months it, it was a lot of realism and uh, it was helpful there were a couple friends who are still there and because they hung out they hung on we are incredibly close um, it's it's not easy and it gets easier, but it's not necessarily in a measurable timeline. Um, one day you just wake up and you're like, wow, this is, like, I have it under control. Like, things are going well. But many, many, many more days before you're going to wake up being like, this sucks. This isn't going anywhere. I'm so frustrated. I'm wasting my life. It, it's, it's positivity. It's, it's goal setting. Even if you can't do hardly anything, do the hardly anything. Give yourself small wins. Know that it will be better in a year from now. I don't know how it will be better from a year from now, but it will be better in a year from now. Then I was able to get a job doing the one thing I promised I would never do again, which is go door to door. And I sold insurance because I was able to work on my own schedule. And I was familiar with the company. They are familiar with me. It was a very nice way to get out of the house and, and kind of feel like I'm contributing again. And after a total of eight months, um, about four months selling insurance, um, then I took a position down in Milwaukee, uh, moved down into a department, and kind of got started. I think for the first time I, I experienced some actual clinical depression to the point where it's like I'm not just sad. I have all these things going on. There's no point for me to feel bad at all. And I, I logically understand that there's nothing to be, th there are reasons to be happy. You don't need to be sad, but just not being able to kick it. And... Um, then I started working out, a lot. I forced myself to work out a lot more. I learned a lot more about paradigm shift this time around. And even if like, hey, it's not happy, that's okay. Some like, sadness is part of, is part of life. Like, the great American poet 50 Cent once said, um, sunny days wouldn't be special if it wasn't for rain. Joy wouldn't feel so good if it wasn't for pain. The more comfortable I've gotten knowing more people who have mental illness, and the more I've understood, not I know I'm like everyone else because I meet everyone else and I know I'm like them, um, but this one thing doesn't really separate me from anyone else. And I think finding group, I, I mean, I love that about group. There's weeks when I want to talk, um, and there's a lot of weeks where it can, it's just really good to listen to other people and listen to people succeed, listen to people stumble and what their next plan is and just see them keep coming back to see new people coming. Um, being able, being able to talk is just so helpful in anything. Mental illness is just like anything, any other challenge in life. I mean, because I was diagnosed with 
bipolar, my entire life has changed. Entire life has changed on a trajectory I can't even imagine how much is different. But I'm really happy.